The last thing I remember was getting in my car and driving on the exit towards the emergency room. And the first thing I remember was waking up and seeing Tom. I was running an errand and then I had a slight headache behind my right eye and I rarely ever got any headaches. And I went outside, called my mom, and she told me to go to the emergency room. And I thought that was kind of crazy and the rest I don't remember. I just remember driving in my car and that was it. Jen had what we call a saccular aneurysm, where there's a weakening of the blood vessel wall. She actually had several aneurysms that needed to be treated and potentially need additional treatment in the future. They arose from two different blood vessels within her brain, particularly on the, on the right-hand side. And saccular aneurysm is what, what led to her rupture and subsequent subarachnoid hemorrhage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage is a potentially fatal uh, condition. Subarachnoid hemorrhage is a, a type of brain bleed, a type of hemorrhagic stroke uh, where an aneurysm ruptures and bleeds into the space where the cerebral spinal fluid lived. This led to bleeding in that space uh, and it fills the fluid spaces all around the brain. She needed a, an emergency drain put in when she first came to the hospital, which allowed us to drain off some of that blood and some of the fluid that built up. It was just a feeling where my stomach dropped, a million thoughts raced through my head. How did this happen? Why did this happen? What was going to happen next? To see her in that ICU room and to be unresponsive through a medically induced coma was, was tough to see. Probably the most scary moment of my life. As we secured the aneurysms, prevented them from bleeding again, she developed what is called cerebral vasospasm. And what that means is in patients who have a lot of blood around the vessels, the vessels can narrow or constrict as a reaction to the blood. And in younger patients where their blood vessels are a little more elastic, that spasm can be very serious. It's the number one cause for delayed death and disability in subarachnoid hemorrhage patients. So there's those patients that unfortunately don't make it to the hospital, those patients that unfortunately require emergency surgery at the time they come in, and then there are patients who develop spasm that can lead to death and further disability. And she had about as severe a case of spasm as one could have. ICU team was critical in effectively saving her life when she went into bad vasospasm. They gave her appropriate medicines, they had blood pressure control. It was a balancing act and the ICU team threaded that perfectly. When families come into a room, a lot of times there's a lot of equipment and there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of noises that aren't normal and that can be very overwhelming. So if you can educate them and get them to understand why we're doing certain things or what pieces of equipment are for, that it kind of relaxes them a little bit and it kind of lets them understand that, yeah, it's scary, but not as scary as I thought because this machine has a very specific reason or that tube has a very specific treatment. It's important to know that the road to recovery is not easy and that mental health is just as important as physical health. And having a strong support system is super important. And it can be anyone from a neighbor to a best friend to a loving spouse. And in Jen's case, she had such a loving family by her side. And that was very important to help her get through her journey. Usually when you're taking care of patients on sedation, you just have to almost put yourself in their shoes and think of how you would feel being sedated or kind of awake and alert with a tube down your throat. So you wanna to try to make it as pleasant as possible for them. She honestly was a phenomenal patient herself. She made nursing easier. Her situation, it was easy to do those neurological checks every hour with her. Honestly, in my heart felt like it was, everything was gonna work out. You just had that vibe. The whole reason I started with rehab is because patients come in and they are so worried about what am I gonna do when I get home? And they come here and we take care of all of that for them and we show them new ways to do things and then they're in so much better shape by the time they're ready to go home. We all really come together to 
make sure that our patients have what they need and even a little extra support like bringing her dog here and just making sure that patients aren't getting depressed and they are able to overcome and achieve anything that they need to while they're here. She took it like a champ. She really did and she got better and now is doing great. So that's what we like to see here on the rehab floor. She said she pulled up, she got out of a car, and she went into the emergency room and collapsed, right? All the way down to the security guard who grabbed her purse, parked her car for her, came back in, all the way to the ED docs and getting Dr. Marcus here and recognizing what was going on and getting her into the lab and getting all that taken care of up to, I mean, the majority of her stay was in the ICU, but I mean, rehab's huge huge part of the, the healing process so it's just amazing especially to see it come full circle to see her walk in with a, a thing of meatballs for me. With stories like Jen's that uh, remind you why you went into healthcare in the first place it's a reason for us to keep going each day. Her case is nothing short of a miracle. Her recovery is a miracle. Denver Hospital the entire system came together because she's really a poster child for care delivered at Denver Hospital. It's hard to describe in words. Sometimes it doesn't even seem real like this actually happened because I don't remember most of it. But sometimes when they're talking about it, I feel like they're talking about somebody else. But it's, it's an amazing feeling. I'm so grateful and get to see all my kids' milestones and see them grow up.